With wrecked timber now in the rearview mirror, Rocktober has started with a bang. A bang that could mark the beginning of an explosive Q4, the time when we tend to see the biggest gains in the shortest period. Now, we've seen some pretty serious FUD in recent weeks. The China ban, Evergrande, the infrastructure bill, not to mention a stock market that could be running out of steam. But they've done almost nothing to slow down Bitcoin's momentum, which is why I don't want to talk about any of that because the bulls are running the show now. Instead, let's talk about what positive news could look like in the months ahead. Because remember, there's still trillions of dollars waiting on the sidelines, poised and ready to take a piece of the pie. What are they waiting for? Well, let's call them bull run superchargers. Talking about the kind of groundbreaking stories with the potential to send the markets into a full-blown frenzy. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. My name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in crypto. If you like money in crypto, make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this video, we look at a few ways that Bitcoin's price can get supercharged. Don't know why I did that movement. I'll just go with it. When it comes to a Bitcoin ETF, the question isn't if, it's when. And many believe that a futures-based ETF could be coming any day now. In fact, according to Bloomberg's Eric Balchunas, the chances of SEC approval this month could be as high as 75%, with pro shares the current 2-to-1 favorite. I mean, I have zero clue how you'd actually calculate those odds, but the point is this. Our old friend Dirty Gary has been teasing the markets with a possible ETF for months now, but he recently kicked the can on four spot proposals. Spot means physically backed. Why? Well, it comes down to something called the 33 Act which typically sees ETFs registered as limited companies and puts tax obligations on the individual investor. So if we're going to see an ETF this month or even this quarter, it's almost certainly going to be futures-based and falling under the 40 Act, which apparently Gensler loves. Almost as much as he loves patronizing retail investors by suggesting they start skipping those caramel frappuccinos. Speaking of chinos, how's that for a disturbing image? Probably the only guy who could challenge Charles Hoskinson to a weird standing competition as a two-to-one favorite. But anyways, back to the ETF. And why wouldn't it be rocket fuel for Bitcoin and crypto in general? Well, there are wide ranges of investors shopping at the Bitcoin for exposure to a new asset class, but not all of them can buy. That could be due to regulatory reasons or even concerns about self-custody of crypto assets. So when you create an ETF, you open the floodgates. You get a massive influx of individuals and institutions rushing in to capture a piece of the pie and integrating it into their wider portfolio. Take gold, for instance. Once upon a time, you had to bury it in the backyard or put it in your teeth. But ever since 2004, investors could gain exposure through ETFs. And just look at what that did for the price action. The good news is that BTC ETF is coming, and soon. I mean, let's face it. There's only one thing the U.S. hates more than losing, and that's losing to France. Second worst is losing to Canada, which has been luring American patriots like Kathy Wood to its own ETFs. It really is just a matter of time before we have some here in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Futures based and then, yes, physically backed. And when that day comes, and that could be this quarter or later next year, well, there's not a line on any chart that Bitcoin would struggle to break through. The next big bull run supercharger is the settlement between the SEC versus Ripple Labs, which will surely be going to the judge scorecards any day now. It's a bit like the Bitcoin ETF, because with the results so clearly set to go Ripple's way, Skeletor and his minions are doing their best to delay the inevitable. Silence, you fuddy fool! I've had it with your whining and bumbling. You're finished here, do you understand? Cast out! Vanished! This week saw the SEC attempt to keep some potentially damaging documents relating to Ether and XRP away from prying eyes, specifically those belonging to Ripple's team of lawyers and, of course, Judge Netburn. And their strategy was to use what's called DPP, Deliberatory Process Privileges. In short, it implies that the documents contain specific discussions about specific laws, which totally undermines the SEC's main argument, namely that no policy-making process was needed since XRP is, according to them, obviously a security in line with the Howey test. It will be up to the judges to decide whether DPP applies here, and the SEC may be forced to hand over the memos. In other developments, Judge Torres recently rejected XRP holders' bid to join the case's defendants, 
which comes after over 12,000 XRP Army members filed a motion to intervene way back in April, saying they were de facto defendants in the case and wanted to protect their interests. And like the SEC, whose actions caused over $15 billion in losses for holders. Go figure. While the rejection isn't exactly surprising, it's actually good news, since it could have seen the case drag on into next century. However, Ripple has scored a win here, because Judge Torres is allowing attorney John Deaton and some XRP holders to participate as amicus curiae, curious friends, a party that is not involved in the litigation, but is allowed to advise or provide information, saying that a Maikai status strikes a proper balance, permitting movements to assert their interest in the case while allowing the parties to remain in control of the litigation. One thing's for sure, though, the SEC is seriously struggling to remain in control of the hearing. And with the court actively seeking XRP holders meaningful perspective, you've got to wonder how much longer this thing can continue. I mean, there just aren't enough angles of attack left for the SEC to attempt. So why would a ripple victory supercharge the bull run? Well, you may have heard my price predictions already with all this FUD settled, I'd expect XRP to go on a mega pump past the $10 mark. That's at least 10 X from what's already a huge coin by market cap. Vast sums of smart money are waiting for this dispute to be over with. And when that moment comes, and it will very soon, XRP is due a truly face-melting move. It's all a performance, folks. Even Dirty Gary's former colleagues at Goldman Sachs are super bullish, with the open secret that they will be jumping aboard XRPL for their future payment ledger system. Ripple is already literally piloting a technology for international central banks to issue and manage CBDCs. The effects of the SEC turning tail would be immense. It would begin the definition of not just XRP, but all cryptos as an asset. That would reverberate through not just the US, but the whole world. A lot of money sitting on the sidelines would buy into crypto and could rocket the cryptoverse market cap to unheard of numbers. Finally, Q4 could also see some big announcements from some of the world's largest companies. It's not uncommon for corporations to engage in a little tax loss harvesting Q4 before their books close for the year. That's an old trick to minimize your taxes while making purchases that benefit their business for the next quarter and beyond. So who might make some crypto buys? Well, it's been over eight months since Tesla announced their $1.5 billion Bitcoin purchase. I guess it's only right we get another big announcement soon. And I mean that with no offense to Michael Saylor. So who could be next? Well, the most obvious candidate would be Twitter. We already know Square holds BTC in their treasury. But with the social media giant's recent integration of the Strike Network, plus the CEO who went from looking like this to this, it would only make sense that they've been quietly stacking sats in a pretty big way. Other candidates would be the evil folks at Facebook. But so far, the only confirmed Bitcoin owned by Blofeld himself is literally a goat. Well, if this was his way of coming out of the Bitcoin maxi closet, you'd imagine he's got at least a few BTC stashed away in there not to mention skeletons. Anyway, next on the list of evil companies could be Google, whose co-founder and Alphabet president, Sergey Brin, admitted that so far they failed to be on the bleeding edge of blockchain. He's also an amateur Ethereum miner, and of course with Google Pay partnering with exchanges like Crypto.com, native crypto integration would put them at the cutting edge. Then again, we haven't seen the kinds of job listings from Google that we've seen from Amazon, who set markets into a spin a few months ago with an available position for a digital currency and blockchain product lead. Clearly, Amazon would be the real game changer here. Whether they announced they held BTC or were introducing crypto payments, because as far as e-commerce is concerned, they're not just the market leaders, they are the market. Only Walmart comes close, and they're yet another major retailer hiring crypto experts. The announcement that came only a few weeks after Amazon's back in August. The race is on. The question isn't who, it's who will get there first. And who will be the next to follow in Tesla's footsteps, put some BTC on their balance sheet? Well, if it's any of the ones I've just mentioned, it would be the rocket fuel to take us to 100K or beyond in record time. So be ready. Christmas could be coming to crypto holders well before December. That's all I got. Be blessed. Big boy out. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. When it comes to crypto, you got to have skills. That's why I'm happy to be partnering with Skillshare to bring you the goods on getting to the top of your game. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes made to inspire creators. Classes are engaging and are curated to help you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, 
and get lost in creativity. Crypto is for everyone, especially artists. Music have found a powerful ally in blockchain and dApps like Audius, putting power back in the hands of the artist. So if you've been looking to make a splash in the music scene, now is your chance. Skillshare offers classes on music and music production for many experts, including guitar teacher Mark Barnacle. Mark gets into the details of guitar and the anatomy of guitar playing. He has great lessons on how to get the most out of your instrument, start your musical journey. Write that next ballad, folk song, or pop sensation while using Skillshare to keep you on the path to grow your musical acumen. We have a special deal for BitSquad members. First 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to improve your skills and stay sharp in the crypto revolution.